Adeline Garman is 30 years old and lives near Brighton. Despite earning £30,000 a year as an IT marketing manager, Adeline has managed to amass a debt of £17,000. Why am I in debt? Because I like buying nice things. Adeline's big love affair is with shoes, and she's always looking to find a pair that she doesn't already own. They're nice, aren't they? I like them. Adeline does love to spend. She loves shoes, you know, chocolates, clothes, skirts. Adeline's fine collection of credit cards have taken a battering, but she'd rather pretend her debts don't exist. I think Adeline sees credit cards as just kind of an extension of an overdraft. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're just not real, are they? No. She sees it that way. I don't think she associates it with real money. And if it wasn't for the two men in her life, she'd be in even more trouble. Mark's bailed me out and my dad's bailed me out in the past. It's time to call in the professionals. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will try to tame Adeline's serial spending. Every time you're in a shop, you see a pair of shoes, you have to mark them out of ten of how much you really want them. While psychological coach Benjamin Fry searches for the emotional roots of Adeline's addiction. I think that there's a theme here of wanting to please. I just don't want to find myself in this downward spiral. You know, it's just embarrassing, it's stupid, I'm a grown woman, and I really, really want to change. Desperate to change, Adeline Garman has just five weeks to crack her spending addiction and start living within her means. Experts Jay Hunt and Benjamin Fry have persuaded Adeline to leave her home for the morning so they can hunt for clues which might explain why Adeline is in so much debt. While Jay will search for hard evidence, Benjamin is on the lookout for signs which might explain the psychological triggers behind Adeline's spending. What are you going to start with? Kitchen? What do you think? Kitchen? Yeah, yeah that well, way, I reckon. Oh, look. Yeah, OK. And this is interesting. It's like a bowl of... Hey, lots of dollars. Well, dollars, euros. What's that one? Thailand, maybe. Here we go. Oh, interesting. Is that her in the photo? Oh, look. Greece. Snow. That's Rome, isn't that it? Is Colosseum. Travel's probably a hobby. The experts are in my house and... Uh, having a bit of a snoop around to find out some more about me, which is um, a little worrying, so I'm quite a private person. Oh, well, that's weird, look. <laughs> that is weird. What do you eat with credit cards? How weird, look at all this. God, there's quite a lot. It's weird, though, it's just sitting in the chopsticks in the cutlery drawer. It is quite odd, unless it's something that she discovered as a strange eating mechanism from one of her foreign trips. You know what I think? I think she's trying not to spend too much, but it's quite interesting that they're in this drawer by the back door, cos if you're on your way out and you suddenly think, mm. uh-oh, I'm trying, but I think I might need them, you can always nip back. And it's not just the credit cards that are bulging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, look! I'm a bit of a foodie. I love shopping for food. I often take advantage of offers in the supermarket, which are real value for money. Any three for two, three uh, for two, three for two. Is that a good thing, or is she being a sucker? Well, it can be a good thing, but it also can encourage overbuying. I mean, she right. buys in doubles. Look, two salmons, two cannellonis. Right. Well, there's some interesting magnets here. It's better to have loved and lost than to live with the psycho the rest of your life. Oh, look at that. It's obviously the shoe of her dreams. It's either something she's aspiring to or she's stuck it there as a clue for her husband as a birthday, Christmas, Valentine's, any time you fancy. Oh. That's what all those things shoes. on our fridge are. I never now understood you that. Know. But these are £335, these shoes. Is this like the shoe of champions? That's a cool designer shoe. I tell you what, there's a shoe like that on the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be more in this house. Uh-oh. I don't think the experts will miss my shoes. There's about 60 pairs at home, all piled up at the end of the bed, and I normally buy about five pairs a month. Shoes are my passion. That mm. is where all the money's going, isn't it, oh, really? Yeah, OK, so talk me through the shoes. I mean, it's interesting, you know, that she's got a picture on the fridge of a pair of shoes for £300, 69.99. There's quite a lot of cheaper shoes, but, you know, it's the quantity versus quality, isn't right. it? So if she traded in this wall of shoes, she could get mm. some decent quality gear. Mm. 
I'm always interested by the bedside book, so I suspect this is her side of the bed. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle oh. Maintenance, one of the great classics of the self-help genre. I'm interested in how this demonstrates her commitment to some kind of inner journey. Do me a label check. Next, gap, petite, petite. petite. <laughs> That's the size, not the oh. label. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> That's what I want. What you got? Oh, it's interesting, because she's got a whole load of credit card statements. So let's take this. Okie dokie. Bank statements in hand, the full extent of Adeline's spending is about to be realised. 30-year-old Adeline has £17,000 of debt. Since she was old enough to get credit, Adeline has been in and out of financial trouble. Yet she's far from hopeless with money. I do my husband's books and um, I look after the, the household accounts and that's fine, it's perfectly balanced, but my own I'm just useless with. Adeline has been married to Mark for three years. He also works in IT, but earns four times as much as Adeline. Based at home, he works long hours, which gives Adeline the perfect excuse to indulge her other passion. When I see a really nice pair of shoes, it's almost like a rush. But these are really fashionable at the moment, aren't they? They're kind of Sarah Jessica Parker. I just like the new things. I like having new things. I like the packaging. I like the smells, the sounds, the textures. It's just exciting. They're fab, aren't they? They're totally impractical. They wouldn't go with anything, but they're just gorgeous. Her face lights up. Blood rushes to her cheeks. Right, I need to try the other ones on. She's been so excited that she stood there clapping. And shoe shopping is just the tip of the iceberg. I think most of Adeline's debt has been on luxuries and being oh, spontaneous. Those. Yeah, just being able to say, oh, it's OK, I have a credit card, I can go on holiday. I went away to Paris with a friend. We also went to Ibiza twice. We went skiing in uh, France, went to Japan and to California. In the past 12 months, Adeline has notched up 11 trips abroad. If you can go abroad and have shoes now, that's, that, that's almost nirvana, really, isn't it? Hi, babe. Hey. I've bought some more shoes. These are fab. They're lovely, babe. What are you going to wear with them? You have to buy a whole new outfit and everything. No, I don't know. Husband Mark has learned to live with Adeline's desire to spend. They're very nice, babe. They're lovely. But the fact is, Adeline's shopping binges are beginning to fill her with dread and loathing. It can be very easy to wake up in the morning with sort of a, a sensation in the bottom of your stomach, I owe money, I owe money, and I, I just don't want that sensation anymore. Having scrutinised her statements, Jay and Benjamin have established Adeline's two key areas of overspending. It's time to meet the experts and face her addiction. Hi, Adeline. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Jay. Hi there. I'm Benjamin. Benjamin. Hi. Welcome home. Now, while you've been out, done a bit of a sort of DIY in your hall. <laughs> so, will you come with us? Mm -hmm. Just have a look. Honestly, you don't need to worry. I promise okay. you, it's all right. It's no surprise that the experts have chosen to shock Adeline with. Righty Let's get you in position. Shoes. Maximum impact. All right. Right. Okay. Now open your eyes. <laughs> See, this is your idea of heaven, isn't it? Yes! Oh, my God, I love it! <laughs> She's kind of shaky. I think her knees are trembling. <laughs> what I wanted to highlight to you was how much money you spent last year on your shoe habit. Have you got any idea how much that was? No. OK. They're lovely, aren't they? They are lovely. <laughs> they are lovely things. However, £2,520 last year was spent on shoes. I think, though, you don't really care at the moment, do you? Because it's like your <laughs> eyes have completely Shall we say the money over. again? We're talking about the money. <laughs> Forget the shoes. I so want these ones. They're lovely, aren't they? <laughs> I've seen these in the shop so many times and drooled over them. This is a disaster. <gasps> is this a good indication of what happens when you're anywhere near shoes? That the fact that they're lovely, you love them, you long to touch them, you just want them. Yeah. Your face. It's like a child on Christmas yeah. Day. Debt, reality, overdrafts, everything is blanked out. Yes. OK. <laughs> now we're getting the picture. Adeline, 
Hi, Golden. Hi. Got delivery for you. Can you just sign here, please? Thanks. Come on out. Let's see what you've just been delivered. Benjamin and Jay have arranged another wake-up call for the globe-trotting Adeline. Well, well, well. Oh, what's this? I wonder why it is that all these suitcases have your name on the luggage tag. I wonder. Oh, no! <laughs> what do you think this is? Yes, this is the amount that I spent on going away. <laughs> Besides going away with her husband, Adeline takes numerous weekend city breaks with her girlfriends. Well, you actually went on 11 trips in the last 12 months. <laughs> Adeline, these suitcases do represent your expenditure on trips abroad in the last year, as you guessed. And this is... £3,950. Now, put it another way, that is three months of your salary. Let's take on board that you have got these debts and let's think a bit, you know, more cleverly about how you're spending your money and where on things that really, really matter to you. So maybe cutting down rather than cutting out. And can we go a bit more Bogner than Prague? <laughs> maybe. <don't> no? <laughs> if I have to. Yeah, because you can probably just get down there for like... <laughs> one of those will probably last you for a weekend in Bogner. Yes. Adeline now knows she needs to cut back on her spending. To discover what she can or can't live without, she'll need to strip back her outgoings to the absolute bare minimum. Benjamin and Jay are about to impose a seven-day spell of cold turkey. Now, Adeline, what we want to talk to you about is setting you a budget for the next seven days, which is a process that we call the cold turkey. I just want to talk to you about how much you think you spend in an average week. With the money, what we're talking about is non-essential spending. So it's the stuff that you exercise choice over in your daily life. I suspect it's about £250. Right, so you think that's an average week. Mm. OK, because we've been through your statements and actually what you get through in an average week is £435.20p. <gasps> no! That is what you get through. Oh dear, yeah, it's vastly more it's than quite I a lot. Earn, isn't it? Is that sort of odd for you, seeing that amount of money in cash? I think that is a bit scary, especially because I always pay mm. by credit card or debit card. What we'd like you to do for your cold turkey is to come up with a minimum, minimum budget for you to spend on non-essential items. OK. How much did you say was here? £435.20p. OK, I think... A about 170, including groceries. Well, I think survey says no. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. To get the most out of it, you've really got to come down to a to squeezed budget. Oh, I don't think I could mm. manage on anything less than £90. This is really important, so I really want you to think carefully about getting this down to the absolute bare minimum. So give me another bid. 30 to £40. Pounds. So what do you think, Jay? 30 to 40 pounds, should we settle on 35? Yeah, 35 pounds, and we're going to throw in <laughs> the 20p. Oh, I thought I was going to take that home. <laughs> so this is your cold turkey budget, which is what you've got for the next seven days for all your non-essential <laughs> items. Do you think it's going to be very difficult to do this? Um, I don't really like to fail at things, so if I'm sort of set a challenge, and I feel this is a challenge, I'm hoping that I can succeed. Well, the real challenge, actually, is not so much can you succeed or not on the budget, although that is very important, but what you'll find from doing that, that you'll take forward. So finding out what you really need and what you really don't, and how you really feel, how you really relate to money. What's going on emotionally when you spend money? OK. And it is only seven days. <laughs> <laughs> They've set me a really tough budget. I haven't got a clue how I'm going to manage with it. Um, £35.20 is a joke. It's, God, it's less than 10% of what I spend at the moment. I'm horrified, to be honest. Day one, and the cold turkey budget is already beginning to influence Adeline's routine. I'm buttering some bread for sandwiches. I'm taking sandwiches with me today. Um, rather than spend two or three pounds with the sandwich man, which is what I usually do. I 
think I'll probably save about 10 to 12 pounds a week making my own sandwiches, so I'm going to try and stick with it. It's been a pain getting up 10 minutes early, but I think once you get into the routine of something, you get used to it, it's not so difficult. But all new routines have their flaws. The downside of making your own sandwiches, I've discovered, is that sometimes you finish them before lunchtime. Off to pick up my dry cleaning. I picked it up before um, I knew about cold turkey, so I'm in for a bit of a shock, I think, about how much it will cost. 875? 875, gosh. Would you like that folded over? No, it's fine. Yeah. I'm a bit worried now that I might have to make sacrifices throughout the rest of the week. I think I've just spent 20, 25% of my uh, weekly budget on dry cleaning. I'm not sure that I'm enjoying myself doing this challenge. It's as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, we'll see how it goes towards the end of the week. At the moment, I've only spent 11.75, so I might be able to treat myself soon. Day four, and Adeline has managed to persuade her friends to change their plans. We had planned to go out to dinner tonight, but instead of spending lots of money on that, I've actually invited all my friends round, and we're working on the decorating together, and I'm just cooking them some dinner. So it's fun to have some friends to do it with. We're having quite a laugh. The decorating might be a laugh, but Adeline's friends agree that her spending is anything but. I think she, that she does need to learn the value of money, and I think that she would be do better in life if she did. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, such a would be one would be enough, definitely not. I think on a normal night with dinner and a taxi and some booze, we probably would have spent about 60 or 70 pounds between me and my husband. Dinner's ready! Um, what do you guys want to drink? Tonight I'm feeding six people for about 15 pounds. If I'd got takeaway in, I probably would have spent 50. Got some quiche? No, there's loads, honestly. It's probably cost me 15 pounds in groceries, but that hasn't come out of my cold turkey money. It's stuff I already had in the freezer. So, free night. <laughs> Psychological coach Benjamin Fry is on his way to visit Adeline to discuss the possible motives for her wayward spending. Over the years, Adeline has moved house 17 times. Her nomadic life began as a child. Adeline's father, an IT consultant, was forced to relocate on several occasions. It had an unsettling effect on Adeline and her younger sister, Nina. I think you were obviously moved around quite a bit, mm -hmm. at quite a significant age. When I was, I think, eight, we moved from Scotland to Germany, and that was a huge transition for me. I used to live next door to my best friend, so, you know, just uprooted, moved to a foreign country. I didn't know anybody. I went to a new school and I felt really like an outsider and that, yeah. was, that was very difficult for me. So you were a bit isolated, really? Yep. I think especially when we first moved to Germany as well. Really? Dad was away a lot. My mum and my sister were Doing two peas in a pod, yeah. Mm. And so that was a really difficult time for me. I felt really comfortable, I felt really confident. And then, whoosh, I was dragged into a totally different environment and my confidence just plummeted. Really? Mm. I think that the other thing we should talk about is the relationship with your father and maybe the relationship with your husband. Do you get on well with your dad? When I got to about 12 or 13, it became very difficult. Um, he didn't really understand me. My dad's quite a non-emotive person. In fact, that's probably a really good comparison with my husband. My, my dad doesn't understand emotions at all. Right. My husband doesn't either. It has to be in black or white. So I'd imagine your spending, which I see very much as emotional behaviour, would be kind of incomprehensible to them. I think to my dad it's quite incomprehensible. I mean, dad's bailed me out a number of times. Well, um, I was going to wonder about it. Yeah, that. and he's, he's been really disappointed in me. My dad instilled in me that, you know, to be successful you have to work for a blue chip company and you'll get all these opportunities and doors open for you. And that this is kind of the picture of success. And I feel that I can't attain that success. Right. Which is disappointing. I feel really ashamed and I want my dad to approve of me and approve of the things that I've done and the choices that I've made. Mm. And he doesn't approve of me. I'm just wondering about... Now, with your husband, do you ever feel like you hold back from saying something about money because you don't want him to know about it? 
Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of instances where I've bought things, but he has quite a blasé attitude. So do you feel in a way like maybe you're letting the side down or something? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. because I don't have anywhere near his earning power, and I never, I never could have. How does that feel? Shit. Really? Can I say shit? Yeah. <laughs> it feels dreadful. Yeah? Tell me more about that dreadful feeling. I can't make an equal contribution. Whatever I do, I'll always be playing catch-up. That really bothers you, then. Mm -hmm. Because there may be a part of you that, in a sense, although this sounds illogical, might almost resent him for earning more money than you. Yeah, I do, and I resent that he has a substantially better career or career options than me. Mm. Do you think that he minds that you earn less money than him? No, he doesn't. We've, we've talked about it to some extent. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, well, I, you know, if you want to quit work tomorrow and stay at home, I really don't mind. But to you, you actually feel upset by that, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You really do, yeah. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> really, like, hurts you. Yeah. Now, that pain is what we have to try and do something about and with. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that dynamic comes from the relationship with your father and the setup there. I think that there's a theme here of wanting to please. And I suspect that there's echoes of that in your relationship with your husband. Mm -hmm. Day seven, the final day of cold turkey, and Adeline has come to London for a night on the town. Spirits are high, and so are the bar prices. Tonight, I'm on my friend Elena's hen night. We're having a really good time. So far today, I think I've spent £17. That's on two drinks. Cold turkey's made me a bit more... Um, made me notice a bit more where my money goes. Hang on. The last place I was at, they added an optional tip automatically onto the bill. I was so fed up with that, I actually argued the case and got a pound back. This cold turkey thing is a nightmare. Despite a valiant attempt at going cold turkey, Adeline goes over budget by £10.65. With the challenge over, it's time to set Adeline a more realistic, long-term budget. To clear her debts, Adeline needs to knuckle down and start saving. To show her how, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has come up with a plan. What we've got here is your new budget. Okay. There are going to be areas where it's going to hit you hard. Going down the list, I mean, there's some things that are really easy to go, like car cleaning. At the moment, you've been spending <laughs> £30 a month. It's recommended that you actually go home and get a bucket of soapy water yourself and do it. Your grocery bill of £500 a month. It's a bit obscene. Well, it's recommended <laughs> that that goes down to 250 so I think maybe one of the areas we should look at is how you shop without mm. you sort of starving. And I think you're going to have to get a bit creative with your shoes and clothes budget because that is going from £250 a month that you currently spend down to £50. Oh, so I know that's going to be really hard, <laughs> isn't it? That will be hard. That will be very hard. Now, holidays is an area that's come up. At the moment, you're averaging £300 a month on your trips. We're recommending £100 a month, which might mean that we actually look at sort of how you spend your time as well as where you spend your time. Maybe near a home where there aren't so many temptations. I'm not going camping. <laughs> I, never, I promise I won't send you camping. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's quite clear that savings need to be made here because when we look down the existing budget, the figure at the bottom is 2,451. Mm -hmm. You know, making the cuts wherever you can make them gets you to a new budget spend of 1,305. Between those two figures, it's a difference of 1,146. It's almost a new car every year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is, when you look at it like that. I mean, the thing about your new budget is it isn't going to be easy every day of the week because I know you've got that sort of whole stack of cards <laughs> in the cutlery drawer ready in case you need to leave the house with them. I've actually decided to cut them all up. Oh, have you? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite a big move. Yeah. So, seriously, getting on with a new budget, no credit cards for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Adeline's love of heels is out of control. If she's going to manage on her £50 allowance for both shoes and clothing, she'll need a will of iron. Keen to learn more about her passion, Jay has asked Adeline to reveal her collection. And it's an impressive sight. Let's have a look. Wow. This is the shoe collection. Wow, when you see them sort of all out like this, what do you think when you look at them? I feel quite pleased. These ones have still got the price on. I know, I haven't worn them yet, but they were a bargain. And did you get them because you liked them or because you thought they were a bargain? I oh, know, I really like them. I just haven't had an opportunity to wear them yet. And how long have you had them? Three or four months. Right. These are very clean here as well. Mm. They look like they haven't been walked about them very much. They haven't really been worn at all. Not at all? No. And how long have you had this pair? About four years. Four years and you haven't worn them? <laughs> but you don't need any more shoes. You don't need that pair of bargain shoes. If I took that away, it's not like, oh gosh, there's a real missing element there in the shoe That's department. That's true, but they are really nice, aren't they? But how much is unusual and nice going to be important when you're trying to pay back this debt and you want to start feeling that you haven't got this debt round your neck all the mm -hmm. time. I see what you mean. What we should be doing is thinking about ways of prioritising purchases rather than just thinking, there's a pair of shoes, I'll buy them because they're shoes. I can't promise anything. Sometimes you just see them and you have to have them. <laughs> Jay wants to teach Adeline how to stick tight to her new shoe allowance. First, Adeline must decide between buying in bulk on the high street or buying fewer, more pricey pairs from designers. OK, Adeline, come through the door. Oh. Now, shoes. Jay's taking Adeline into a top Brighton boutique to prove that it can be as simple as one, two, three. I just want you to stop for a minute, OK? Because this is going to be a new way of shopping with you for shoes. What we're going to do is start marking them out of ten. Right. OK, so every time you're in a shop, you see a pair of shoes, you have to mark them out of ten of how much you really want them. And then at the end of the day, you can go back and buy the pair that you want the most, OK? okay. Looking at these, what immediately catches your eye? Well, they're all really varied, so there's quite a few pairs that I like. I mean, I quite like all of these, but again, there's some nice ones here. I mean, they're really unusual, aren't they? Now, how many marks out of ten would you give that? I'd probably give that about a seven or an eight. They've got a nice big heel and they look fairly glam. What about these? Yeah, those ones I really like. They're fantastic. They're probably a nine. Oh, <laughs> they're lovely, are. aren't they? Gina shoes. This mm. is your ultimate fancy, isn't it? It is. I do like Gina very much. And this is what's been on the fridge for yep. two years. Yep. Ten out of ten. They're <laughs> really gorgeous. Now, that's £325 yes. for one pair of shoes. If you want this type of shoe, you're going to have to really pare down. And you also might want to be thinking about buying more expensive pairs of shoes that are going to do more jobs than these are. Because mm. these are only really glittery, evening-y. That is probably something you're going to get a bit more wear out of. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I could almost wear those to work as well. How many marks out of ten for those? They're not quite as glamorous as the other ones, but I think they're probably an eight or a nine. Have you ever tried on a pair of Gina shoes? No, I haven't. This whole Gina thing has been such a fantasy for you, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at those lovely, twinkle toes. Yeah, they're nice. Yes, they're really nice. <laughs> so now you've got them on your feet, marks out of ten. I still really like them and I'd still give them an eight or a nine, but in terms of price, I think I'd have to give them a one or a two. <laughs> Do you think that you could target right back on all your £60 pairs? Is it worth it for these? That's a difficult one. I'm not sure. The key to this whole thing is choice. You're in control of your own money. So if you can do the sort of marks out of ten and prioritise where you want to spend your money, there's no reason at all why you can't have a couple of pairs of these along with other things. What you can't do is buy a pair of these and all the other purchases. Jay has provoked a surprising response from Adeline. 
with a monthly shoe and clothing budget of just £50, Adeline realises it will take seven long months of saving to afford her favourite heels. It's a big wake-up call for Adeline. Jay definitely burst the Gina bubble. I thought that, well, I can't describe the emotions that I had when I first saw those shoes in the magazine. I opened the magazine and I was just having hot flushes. But then trying them on, I didn't get that burst of excitement that I anticipated. I thought I'd try them on and feel like I was flying. I thought I'd feel like I was Dorothy with her magic red shoes, and that just didn't happen. Um, and I got home and looked at a couple of pairs of shoes, and I thought, well, actually, I like these just as much, and they were a fraction of the price. But I realised very much that I focus on quantity over quality. I still like to think that I'm getting good quality, but I don't want to spend £300 on a pair of shoes. With Adeline's shoe fetish momentarily under control, Jay turns her attention to food. Each week, Adeline buys enough food to feed a family of four, setting her back over £100. The money she saves on special offers may be practical until most of it ends up in the bin or rotting on the compost heap. Jay has arranged to meet Adeline at the local supermarket to curb her wasteful ways. Jay's first tip is simple. Plan ahead, write a list and stick to it. As obvious as it sounds, one-fifth of us don't bother. You might as well treat yourself because you're actually going to be buying less things. So okay. let's do sort of the quality over the quantity and okay. get really nice treat things, yeah? Yeah, sure. That one's got a 30p saving on. Excellent. What okay. we're getting you out of the habit is going for the savings when you didn't need it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> this is your choice of potato. No wonder the bloody compost heaps the size of a house. I think the ice cream's down here. There's loads of it. Well, I would normally get that, but that's a buy two for five pounds. It is a bad idea if things are going to sit in your fridge and go off mm -hmm. and you're overbuying. But, you know, ice cream's going to sit in the freezer, so I would definitely do that one. OK. Yep. Yep. I think we're done here. OK. Cool. Adeline's weekly food shop normally comes in at around £120. £28.45, pounds. please. Oh, it's a bit less than usual. Adeline, I think that's really good. We've written a list and it's coming at under 30 quid. Mm. That is good going. I guess I'm starting to realise that saving money or not overspending is about being organised. So it's getting up early and it's making your own lunch. It's planning the week before what meals are going to have for the next week. All things that are really simple and, you know, I have the skills to do, I just haven't been bothered to do. So uh, there's going to be some changes. With Jay making progress on cutting Adeline's spending, psychological coach Benjamin Fry wants to get to the root of Adeline's addiction. Adeline's parents divorced five years ago. Her father doesn't want to talk about the past, so Benjamin visits Adeline's mother, Lynn. Do you think that you're quite different in general to Adeline? Would you say she takes... I think she has a lot of me in her, but um, she's a lot like a father. Yeah. Mm. Yes. In what way? She's a go-getter. She... Anything a man can do, she feels that she can do better, and frequently does, so... When did that start? She's always been very competitive. Mm. Did you and your husband want um, boys? It would have been nice to have a boy, but I never set my heart on having a boy. I think my husband probably would have liked a boy. Yeah. But I think Adeline more than fulfilled his wishes. Yeah. <laughs> Even though she's a girl. Yeah. So do you think she took on that role of being like the boy of the family? 
quite possibly, yes. To please her dad or just because that was natural? Oh, she always wanted to please her dad, yeah. Mm. She's daddy's girl, definitely. Is he an emotional person? Not very, no. He can show emotion, but he's learned to keep it bottled up. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. So how did Adeline get any praise out of her father? She'd have to ask him for it. Right. You know, look, I've done this, you know, how, how do you feel about that? And he'd say, oh, yes, yes, I think you've done well. Rather than praise her openly, he would, oh, I think she's earned this, I'm, um, she'd ask for something, and he'd say, yes, I'll buy it for you and go out and buy it for her. Mm -hmm. And I think he felt that when he gave her money, he, that was his way of showing that he loved her. So do you think he, she learned to communicate with him through money rather than through feelings? I think, I think she'd tell him that he was wonderful, you know. She'd say, can I have money for something? Mm. Oh, all right, he'd say, and give her the money, because he felt that's how, he, how to show love, and he'd give her the money. She really equated money with love, didn't she? I think she probably did, yes. Yeah, so she probably wasn't asking for money. Mm -hmm. She's asking for love. Mm -hmm. Adeline's father used to buy her stuff instead of giving her praise or recognition that he could have done verbally. So I'm not really surprised that Adeline, now in her adult life, uses money as a way to communicate her own emotional needs. Adeline's childhood emotional traits appear to have spilled over into her relationship with husband, Mark. Like Adeline's father, Mark is also an IT consultant. As a freelancer, he is as addicted to work as Adeline is to shopping. Occasionally my work is very demanding and absorbs you know, 100% of my time. And, yeah, so I think, although Adeline accepts that that's the case and she knows that that's the type of person I am, I think it can be very frustrating for her. Adeline's been on retail therapy for two weeks and the reality of her emotional needs is beginning to hit home. She's finding it difficult to stay out of the shops, and it's not long before she's in need of a pick-me-up. I was in town and I accidentally bought a pair of shoes. They were £25, and out of my budget doesn't leave me very much. And it doesn't stop there. To be honest, I was a bit bored. I was in town after a meeting, and um, it was one of those things that I saw and I loved it the moment I saw it and I feel like that's, an, that's almost kind of an omen that you have to buy something. And here's a pair of trousers as well. I think these were about £45. I'm not sure how I'm going to explain this one. I had a bit of a bad day at work and uh, went to town at lunchtime and picked up a top which was quite expensive but I really liked it. I've kind of decided that I'll pay for this out of next week's budget. <laughs> If Adeline is going to reap the long-term benefits of Jay and Benjamin's advice, she's going to have to try much harder. So far, she's been given the shock treatment... Oh, no! ..battled against her addiction to shoes and quit the false economy of overbuying. On the psychological front, Adeline has started to face the emotional issues behind her spending. With debt still at £17,000, Jay wants to tackle Adeline's biggest annual expenditure, holidays abroad. Hi, Jay. Now, Adeline, one of the reasons I wanted you to come and have tea with me here is because it's a very traditional English tea shop. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is maybe me upping the fact that things English <laughs> can be enjoyed as well, because I know £4,000 it was last year that was spent on all your weekend trips, trips abroad. Mm -hmm. Is it imperative to be in a different country in order to feel that you can relax at the weekend? Not really, but I think I've never really considered going away in the UK. We've always done something abroad because right. it sort of takes you away from the routine yeah. of being... You know, I could go and visit a friend mm. in Buckingham, say, but we'd still be sort of in her routine. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. That, so it's getting out of the routine yeah. rather than having to be abroad. Yeah. That's what's important. And who do you go on these weekends with, mainly? Um, mostly with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And we've done the usual thing, shopping, clubbing, <laughs> the barring, that kind of thing. Because <laughs> that is the other thing, isn't it? Is it? I think there's sort of hidden costs. It's really easy to get sucked in. You know, when you're on the internet and you see the banner ads and it's like 60 quid weekend in Europe and you think, yippee, what a bargain. But it's all those extra things that you don't necessarily add up. Shops that you might see, shoes that need investigating, those things get forgotten about. Now what I've found for you to have a look at is something a bit closer to home. I mean I know that your budget for going away on weekends has been stripped right back but you could still afford to do something like this. This is a hotel where you could actually go and relax. You could go with your girlfriends. It'll take you out of your normal environment and it's a treat because it's got all the spa facilities there. Okay and Tunbridge Wells is only about 30 miles away. And from... it's not that far. Mm, that sounds interesting. So that is for you. Adeline's wasted no time at all in taking Jay's advice. Put shopping as a hobby on your CV. With her best friend Siobhan, they're off on a retail-free weekend of budget bliss. Didn't even really realise Tunbridge Wells was here. With no stop-offs allowed. Look, shops. Ooh. Wow. A new adventures holidaying in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Got here, settled into the room for an hour or so and caught up, and it feels great. <laughs> mm. Adeline has escaped her routine. Even better, she hasn't given a thought to shopping. This is so relaxing, really nice. I was a bit sceptical about relaxing in England because of the weather, but uh, this weekend's been absolutely fabulous. It's been a lot less stressful than going away to Europe. No planes to catch, no delays, no other passengers, no lost luggage. What we've done here, we've just totally chilled out and it's great. I feel really relaxed and ready for the week ahead. And it's actually a lot cheaper than I had expected it to be. Um, we can even afford to splash out on champagne. And I haven't been tempted by the shops in Tunbridge Wells. It's been fantastic. This feels so decadent. <laughs> Psychological coach Benjamin Fry wonders if a lack of emotional communication in Adeline's marriage could be fueling her need to spend. He meets Mark to gain a new perspective on their relationship. Obviously, marriage is a, is a kind of team. You know, it's, a, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And from your perspective, you're very comfortable with your role in that. You're happy to provide financially, and you don't really mind what she contributes to that. So yeah, the, the finance doesn't... Is, is it an issue for me? There must be though something that you do expect from them. It must be a part of your kind of life together that you feel she contributes to. I'm wondering what that is. I guess I'm a bit of a romantic idealist. Mm. I just want someone to be happy with and share my life with. Yeah. I think... So it's emotional comfort, in a sense. Emotional presence. Mm -hmm. Adeline makes a, a huge amount of contribution to our relationship. Of course she does. You know, she's quite dynamic and proactive. She yeah. looks after my finances far better than I could. Why do you think she's so organised and successful with your joint finances but not with her own? She wants to... She wants me to perceive her as a success. Yeah. And she does these things, you know, to, to show that she's capable of doing it. Sure. Uh, and I think that's more of a conscious and logical decision. Yeah. Whereas... You know, in the past, spending has been very emotive, and it's uh, it's not been controlled necessarily by her full conscious thought. Because mm. it's interesting, because it shows that she's perfectly capable of coping with money. 
mm -hmm. and that when it's in a non-emotional space, it's fine. So therefore, what she's doing with money that's destructive must be an emotional communication. And it's got to mean something, isn't it? Yeah, it, it isn't about logic. I wanted to just kind of say, I suppose, that I think with Adeline, what's going on with the spending is it's her way of communicating with what she perceives as an unemotional male world. Do you think there's any truth in that? Adeline calls me an emotional cripple because uh, I'm, she doesn't believe I'm too emotive, but I think most men struggle to identify emotionally with the needs of, of women. So do you think she's aware of how you perceive her as being successful and helpful to you in that respect? Yeah, I would hope she understands that. And I think she's missing that. She's, she's sort of missing what she brings to um, creating a happy life with you. I think Mark has a very rational worldview and isn't particularly comfortable with some of the more emotional behaviour that he sees as being very feminine. It could be, therefore, that Adeline's behaviour with money is really about her trying to find a way to communicate her feelings with men. I think this probably started with her father and now continues with Mark. But there's no outlet for her emotionally. She's not being listened to. Mark is who he is, and Adeline needs to accept that, and she needs to learn to communicate and to speak and to say what she needs to be heard, even if no-one's listening. Mark, are you ready? Mm-hmm. OK. To help open up the lines of communication, Benjamin sets Adeline and Mark an unconventional challenge. Thank you. On the rock face, there are no winners. Each person relies entirely on the other for their safety. The only option is to work together as a team. And the vital ingredient right. is trust. Sometimes it's a bit intimidating because he is so successful at things. Everything he turns his hand to, he achieves. Uh, my arms are naked. Up or down? I was quite excited about the thought of him falling down. <laughs> oh. Whoa! Well done. Good effort. Uh. <laughs> yeah, she got a wish. I sort of fell off halfway up. Huh? Well, I've got to bloody do it now. <laughs> You can do it, babe. Bollocks. <laughs> now go out to the yellow one with your left foot. It did feel like teamwork. I felt really safe. Use your feet. Push yourself up with your feet. Try the, the next grey one up, babe. There. That's it. Because I knew that he had my best interests at heart and, you know, he, he kept pulling it really tight when there was slack. I felt really confident. I go out to the yellow one. That's it. Yeah, it was good. It was, I think it is quite a good team-building thing. Uh, you have to really trust the, the other person. <laughs> Yay! I'm here! Sit back in your harness. First moment when you let go at the top of the wall. It's a, you know, a moment of trepidation. You know, even if the rope had broken, I think he would have run along with his arms out to catch me. So it was a really good exercise in teamwork and trust, I think. I guess in an environment like this, no-one is the winner. So, you know, it's just an enjoyable pastime, and it, I guess it builds the trust and deepens the relationship. It's been five days since Adeline and Mark went rock climbing. Thank you. Looks good. Had a really good day today too. The hard work they put in appears to be paying off. And together they find the courage to open up. I think we make quite a good partnership. See, I think you're... To, OK, I'm down to earth in the kind of organising way, but you're down to earth in the emotional, rational way, aren't you? In the non-emotional, rational way. How do you think we work well together? I think I'm less emotive than you are, yeah. And I'm sure you get frustrated at times because I don't show my emotions as much as I do. you like. You're right, I and do. I apologise for that. Proud of you 
For doing what? For everything, for, you know, organising our life. I think you've got a lot of drive and it is difficult to decide that actually there are things about you that you don't like and you want to make a change and and you've gone beyond that and you've actually made a change. You know, and I think you've done, you know, really, really well to, to manage to do that. But I don't know, I feel a bit more comfortable. I mean, I was a bit anxious that I couldn't talk to you about things that are important to me because you didn't understand or you were unemotive. And before I was dealing with feeling miserable, well, one of the ways I was dealing with it was by going shopping. Actually, I just have to recognise the signs of what causes me to be miserable and deal with it. Being sensible about spending or being sensible about not spending has made me feel happier as well because I constantly felt guilty about spending money on myself. You know, because I couldn't make such a big contribution and then I was spending money on myself and made me feel bad. I suppose I feel more serene and more content overall. There, there has been a, a significant change in her you know, level of happiness. She'll, you know, say why she's unhappy and we'll talk about it. She is able to overcome that fear and you know that hesitancy to you know be completely honest about things i do feel far more that our relationship is two people um working together as part of a team rather than two individuals with their own separate goals and aspirations um i think we both bring individual qualities to the relationship and together we are a really successful team and it's it's a really nice positive feeling i'm not putting myself under pressure anymore to try and achieve the impossible to try and achieve this huge income that matches Mark's. Five weeks ago, 30-year-old marketing manager Adeline Garman had a shoe habit to rival Imelda Marcos. At £17,000, her debt was sky high. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has provided practical tips to maintain control in the shops, while psychological coach Benjamin Fry has helped Adeline work on her relationship with Mark. Now on the road to saving for the first time in her life, Adeline is putting into practice what she's learnt. A valet used to cost Adeline £30 a month. So I'm out cleaning the car. Um, I wasn't looking forward to it, but now I'm out. It's not actually too bad. The weather's nice. I'm burning some calories. My car looks pretty good as well. Thinking about it, I think the valet was quite expensive. I'm not saying I'll never use the valet again, but maybe it's just a special treat for me and my car. Very bad. Before she began her retail therapy, Adeline was spending £120 a week on groceries. Now she spends half that amount. Jay would be really pleased with me. <laughs> wow, look. I mean, she buys in doubles. Look, two salmons, two cannellonis. That's the contents of my fridge. I've got dinner for tomorrow, dinner for Sunday, dessert for tonight, dessert for Sunday, a couple of things in the freezer, and that's really it. I definitely was out of control with groceries, but I kind of... I justified it to myself by saying, well, it's food, you know, it's not like I'm being really frivolous and spending money on clothes for myself. But when I think about how much money I was spending, I just wasn't being very organised in my approach to shopping. Adeline has come to the end of her financial makeover. Jay and Benjamin have come to Brighton to catch up for the last time. And Adeline's chosen the venue. How do you feel now when you come in here? Do you feel different? Um, yeah, I do feel a bit different. I don't feel such a compulsion to shop. I mean, there are a few things, like I've just seen these in the window. I love these shoes. The old me would have just walked in and bought them without second yeah. thoughts, but now I'm sort of a bit concerned about the price. Um, I mean, two weeks budget. Yeah. Although I'd probably give them a nine out of 10. I'm not gonna buy them. Does the marking system help you? 
Um, the marking system does help. I think what helps more is the tip that you gave me about not buying something straight away, either leaving Just it until the waiting. end of the day yeah. or leaving it until a week later. Well, that's really interesting because it does seem to me to show that maybe the, the emotional component and the compulsive component of shoe shopping for you is kind of diminished and you're left with the reality that shoes are just shoes. I think you've hit the nail on the head, Benjamin. I, I realise that shoes are just shoes and although I've seen a lot of nice shoes, I'm not, you know, I don't feel that I have to buy every pair that I see. Mm. Well, the ultimate test, though, will be leaving your favourite shop without a bag in your hand. I'm going to test you out now. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I think in five weeks she's come a huge way. I mean, when I think of her at the beginning and the look on her face. No! <laughs> <laughs> she's gone shaky. I think her knees are trembling. <laughs> to suddenly come from that to being somebody who can kind of take it or leave it when in a shoe shop, that's really proof of the pudding. Now that Adeline has engaged with her emotional issues and has really plumbed the depths of them and taken practical steps to reinforce those lessons, I'm not surprised that those underlying pressures to spend money have been alleviated.